It's time to revisit the Red Hood and the Outlaws storyline. Not the original from New 52, but we're gonna go back to the DC Rebirth version. The one that included Jason Todd, Artemis, and Bizarro. Which, shockingly, turned out to be one of my favorite stories in DC Rebirth. Honestly, when they announced this, I really didn't know what to expect, but this has turned into one of my favorite. But, if you've been following this since the beginning, in which we had the Red Hood meets up with Artemis and Bizarro storyline, and the What Do I Do About Bizarro storyline, you've probably been curious as to what is the deal with Artemis. It's time for us to figure that out today. <sighs> In our last video, Jason Todd was faced with the grim task of stopping what could happen if they allowed Superman's clone Bizarro to live. He decided to take Bizarro out to the peaceful meadows to make Bizarro feel at ease before he was secretly going to kill him with a kryptonite bullet. But after listening to Bizarro tell his story of how he would like to help the world and make real memories with him and Artemis, Jason put away his gun. As the bartender hands Jason a glass, he tells him that he really doesn't care who he is, even if he is going to make a name for himself being the bad guy. But around this place, he's just another customer. A customer who hasn't earned the right to ask about a regular like Mr. Stirk. Jason tells him that he's just trying to hire the guy, not looking for any trouble or anything. Artemis says that actually, that would be her. And the bartender asks, who exactly would you be? Artemis spins back, smashing a glass into one of the many villains surrounding them and shouts, She is the one looking for trouble. As the entire bar breaks out into a fight, Jason and Artemis make short work taking out the thugs until one calls out, Sister, to Artemis. When Artemis turns back, she sees her friend, Akilla, and she asks, By the goddess how? Akilla asks if she really thought death would stop the Shimtar, as she pulls an arrow out of her bow. Jason cracks her in the back of the head, telling her, Yeah, yeah, no one is buying the whole shape-shifting Sturk thing. As Sturk starts to change back into his own form, Jason says, So, what's the deal? Sturk obviously shown you an image of someone that you knew. And Artemis says, What is that expression that you people have? None of your business. Artemis pours herself a drink and downs it in one gulp. She says that her name is Akilla. They were best friends growing up, both trying to hone their skills in combat, so that they could become the one true protector, the Shimtar. However, Akilla didn't believe fighting for a pantheon that she felt had long ago abandoned them. The place that they were staying, Banamidal, was a haven for warrior women who had left Themyscira when a foremother had fallen out of favor with Queen Hippolyta. One day, Akilla vanished into thin air, disappearing without a word, and then weeks later, she just appeared. When she was found, she knew that she had changed. She had been summoned. She couldn't speak of anything because she was duty-bound by the gods. Time passed, and one night the village was attacked, and Akilla defended it using the Bow of Ra. That's when she appeared. Diana of Themyscira. She had come to stop Akilla from using the bow's destructive powers. All she wanted to do was protect the sister that she loved. So Artemis attacked Diana, but knowing what she knows now, she would have rather welcomed Diana's help. The bow had changed Akilla, changed her into something that could kill everyone. And in the end, she stood with Diana, and it was by her hand that she killed Akilla. Artemis looks at her glass, saying that the bow was thought to have been lost in the conflict, reclaimed by the gods, or so her and Diana thought. Jason tells her that they need to go find it, and Artemis slams her glass down, telling her, Let's. As Jason and Artemis fly to Karak, they watch a news report about how General Ahmed Haneli, a self-appointed dictator, has bombed his countrymen when they attempted to flee to the neighboring countries. The news says that the attack was something unidentified, but Artemis says that the power that they just saw was the power of the Bow of Ra. And Jason adds that Black Mask did say that he sold it to someone in Karak. Jason tells her that magic isn't what it used to be. Maybe Heleni found a way to use it. Pray to all of the gods of every pantheon that this isn't the case. Humans, a man in particular, cannot be trusted with the destructive power of the sun. Her and Akilla had trained their whole lives to become the defenders of their people. The ones who could even use the bow. And if the power drove Akilla mad, what chance does a mortal have? But before Artemis can say another word, the plane receives a transmission from Haneli, telling them that they are in a no-fly zone. They must turn back or they will be shot out of the sky. They've already witnessed the power that he's capable of. Jason grabs the radio, telling him, Sorry, but orders aren't really our strong suit. Tell your minions to lock and load. Artemis says that that was rather bold, and Jason tells her, Relax, it's not anything that Bizarro can't handle. Outside the plane, Bizarro sinks, as he sees a missile heading straight for him and then explodes. As the smoke clears, he tells them, Hmm, that's a rude. He lets go of the plane to chase the jets that are after them. As the plane starts to fall, Artemis hits the roof, stating that they couldn't just steal a plane that flew. Jason had to make Bizarro feel useful, huh? 
Bizarro shoots over to the fighter jets chasing them, and he begins to tear apart the planes, asking, There! How am you like it? Back at the falling plane, Jason says, Look, Bizarro let the pilots escape! Kind of feels like we're having a positive effect on the guy! Bizarro quickly flies back over, catching the plane, and as a bright light shines, Bizarro says, Me, I'm back, but me, I'm confused. It am nighttime. Where did sun come from? Another explosion goes off, sending everyone to the ground, and a short while later, Jason wakes up covered in ice. He zaps the ice off, breaking out, stating that he's so done crawling out of graves. But thanks to Bizarro, wherever you are, he's okay. Suddenly, rifles are thrusted into Jason's face, and he tells them, Look, how about we don't do something that you are going to regret later? Elsewhere, Bizarro begins to feel a stick pointing his face, and when his eyes open, he shouts, Reds! Bizarro, I'm save you! And when he sees that he landed in the middle of a town with strange people around him, he says, Bizarro, I am not have any idea what is going on. As usual, <sighs> The next morning, Jason wakes up in his cell and the soldiers guarding him tell him that they know that he's an American, which makes him stubborn and arrogant. He needs to tell them why he's here. Jason says that he'll only talk to the general, not his lackeys. And one of the men tells him, look, we decide whether he sees you or not, so give us something to work with. Jason looks out the bars of his cell telling them, fine, I have a history here. I once died. A man sent me on a wild goose chase to find my birth mother. And then I was nearly beaten to death and blown up. As Jason goes on, he trails off, seeing the old destroyed building that he was left in. And then he turns back to the soldiers, asking, Is this just another one of Joker's games? One of the guards asks, What the hell are you even talking about? And another says, Look at his eyes. That's the eyes of a crazy man. Jason then shoes off the guards, telling them that they're gonna have to find the pasty-faced freak if you want me. I'll be right here. If not, go get the general. As the guards leave, Jason sees himself as Robin. The young Jason asking, This is what you became? Maybe I would have preferred death. Jason leans against the wall, telling them, yeah, maybe. In another part of the country, Artemis is bound and chained. And even before she opens her eyes, she knows the smell. The smell of a thousand men never fades. But the voice that she can hear shouldn't be alive. Artemis opens her eyes and sees Achilla with her war axe. And she shouts, I have killed you. Achilla says, we shouldn't dwell on the past, but we're together again. And all is as it should be. Now it's time to save the world, Artemis. Later, Artemis stands in a chamber with other Amazonian women. They all begin toasting, telling Artemis that they have heard a great many things from Achilla. Artemis turns to the groups, telling them, I, I need a moment. And in the back of her mind, she knows that she can't stay. She needs to find Jason and Bizarro. Achilla follows up behind her, telling her that she's sorry for stringing her up and stealing her beloved axe. She just needed time to explain. Artemis looks out at the restored city and says that that isn't the problem. What she wants to know is how their home is even here. Achilla says that Ra doesn't explain his ways to her. So they should just take a moment and be grateful. Welcome back, little sister. Meanwhile, out in the desert, the young boy Olan is hanging off of Bizarro's shoulders, asking if he's sure that this is where he wants to take them. Bizarro tells him, Yes, you am wanting to be free. Me am bringing you to the Reds. They am way smarter than Bizarro. As Bizarro looks in the mountain right in front of them, he then adds, What a problem. One of the men in the group shouts, what is he, stupid? There's a mountain in our way. But before he could go on, a voice calls out to the refugees, telling everyone to stop. They are in violation of the general's orders. Suddenly, an attack helicopter flies by, firing into the crowd, telling them this is their final warning. Bizarro uses his freeze abilities, hitting the helicopter, telling them, Here am your final warning! Bizarro, do not do warning! Bizarro does mad! All of the refugees begin to run away from the helicopter, but before it can crash, Bizarro catches it, telling them, Bizarro might not be as smart as Red him, but me am not stupid. After throwing the helicopter out of the way, Bizarro turns back to the mountain telling everyone, If mountain am problem, Bizarro will move it. Duh. And then he punches it. Back with Artemis, the two continue to look over Bonham Adal, and Artemis asks if she still wants to believe that this is all possible. What is the meaning of gathering these warriors? Achilla holds her glass to the women, telling them that they will reclaim the bow of Ra. The bow was her responsibility. Artemis grabs Achilla's hand, asking, What happened? How are you even alive? And Achilla tells her that it was that man. General Heleni, after recovering the bow, he attempted to use it to no avail. Heleni then researched and looked for someone who could use the bow, and that's when he heard of me. After finding my tomb, he used his technology to bring me back, but I escaped shortly after waking. Artemis turns her head crying, saying that it just tears her up to hear this. And Achilla wipes her tears, telling her, I forgive you no matter what you had to do. Ra is bestowing his blessing on the people of Bana Madal, so it is time for them to put an end to the general. Meanwhile, over at Jason's cell, a few more images of his former self flash by, and then he wakes up tied to a chair, thinking, 
So that's why I had the visions. Concussions! As Jason looks up, Hanelli says that he thought keeping him alive would prove useful. Perhaps learn how he survived their attack on his plane. Hanelli then turns back, telling the guards to take the American out and shoot him. But as they undo his ropes, Jason quickly knocks them out, grabs a rifle, and points it at the general's neck, asking, What did you mean by there? Because there would mean that you didn't attack my plane. It also would mean that you're not in possession of the bow. Hanelli then pleads, telling him that he doesn't understand. He has to act like he is the one who did this because he doesn't want to show weakness. Yes, at one point he did have the bow, but Black Mask told him that only one person could use it. Jason's eyes widen, saying his partner told him only a Shimtar could wield the bow. She also said that the last one to use it is dead, unless. Back at Bonham Adal, Akilla heads back to her chambers and quietly calls her mistress to her. The bow of Ra begins to form in her hand and Akilla says that in the name of their beloved Ra, soon all will kneel before his power or they will burn. Later as the night goes on, Jason finds himself standing with Anelli and his men as Akilla appears before them, shouting that he would soon rather die before surrendering Karak to them. Jason tells him, man, spoken like a true statesman. Akilla calls out to Hanelli and his men, telling them that she is Akilla, Shimtar of Banam Adal, and their reign of terror is finally over. As the Amazons charge down, Artemis grabs Jason, telling him, There you are! Though I never thought you died in the plane crash, I never thought I'd find you on their side. Jason starts fighting back Hanelli's men, telling her, Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing, but there's definitely a perfectly good reason. He says that he doesn't have it. She does. Artemis punches another man, asking, how can you believe those words? And Jason tells her, For starters, if Anelli did have the bow, wouldn't he be using it right about now? Artemis pauses for a moment and says, He must be lying. She runs through the battlefield, grabbing the general, shouting for him to tell her where the bow is before she removes his head from his shoulders. He calls out asking if she really thinks that he would use something to kill his own people. It might be time for her to ask herself who hates Karak, the current leader or their leader? Artemis tightens her grip, telling him, Call off your men. And Hanelli tells her that he will not, he will not leave the mercy of his citizens to their angry goddess. Akilla pulls back on the bow, telling him, so be it. And Hanelli bursts into flames. Akilla then shouts for everyone that in the name of Ra, she commands them all to surrender. Artemis holds out her sword, calling back to Akilla, telling her, you were lying to me. You're the one from the news who killed all of those people. It was you who brought down our plane. As Akilla looks back down, she tells Artemis, I knew I could only deceive you for so long. So, once the enemy is destroyed, we will see. Jason says that he's sorry, but they have to do this. People change when they come back from the dead. Trust him. Artemis calls out to her mistress, and her battle axe appears. Before anyone can continue fighting, there's a rumble in the ground, and then an explosion goes off, causing part of the mountain to fall on Akilla. Bazaar walks out of the hole, scratching his head. Reds, me brought new friends to you. Can uh, we go home now? Akilla bursts through the ground, punching into Bazaar, shouting, You can go straight to hell! Bazaar is launched across the battlefield, and Artemis tells the Amazons to take the people to safety. She will handle this. Akilla then releases an arrow towards Artemis and the refugees, stating that these people are only taking a space. Artemis asks herself, How far is Akilla gone? as she braces herself from the hit from the arrow. A fiery blast rips through the land, slamming into Artemis, and once the smoke clears, Akilla walks down asking if she's. Artemis holds out her battle axe, telling her, Of course. Of course not. This is her damned mistress, a metal guardian that she does not deserve. Akilla reaches out, telling her that this is her last chance. Join her, please! And just then, Jason appears, slashing into Akilla's back with the all blades, telling her that she must be dense. After Akilla turns back and punches Jason down, he says, that must be it for those blades. And then Akilla brings the bow up, shouting, just shut up and die! Jason begins shooting, telling her, not a boat. And the Bizarro punches Akilla, shouting, Anyone who hurts Bizarro's friends gets hurt even more! Jason tells Bizarro to remember the thing he said about not hurting people so hard? This is the one time to forget it, man! Akilla starts fighting back, shouting, No science is stronger than the will of Ra. But then Artemis picks up the boat, pulling back three arrows, telling Akilla that it wasn't the axe who saved her. She was once told that a warrior doesn't choose her weapon, it chooses her. Akilla looks back, asking if she has any idea of the horrors that fall on those who do not deserve to wield the bow. And Artemis tells her, yes. She's staring right at her. And she releases the arrows. As they shoot off, Artemis thinks back that it should have incinerated her, as it would to anyone not a Shimtar. But it obeys, and it becomes a part of her. If Ra agreed with Akilla's plight, then his flame would do no harm to her. But clearly, as she is burning, Akilla was mistaken. Akilla's beginning to burn, and Bizarro says, Fire Lady getting hotter? Akilla struggles to talk, stating that she can no longer control it. Please, do whatever is right. Artemis says that she won't fail her like she once did. Bizarro. Bizarro grabs a hold of Akilla's body, and as Artemis says her final goodbyes, he rockets into the sky, holding Akilla, allowing Akilla to explode and harm no one. 
A short while later, Jason asks Artemis if she's okay. And she rests her head on his shoulder, telling him, not at all. After finally landing in the ground, Bizarre gets up, telling the both, Me, me, I'm not feeling so well. Jason then asks, now that she has the bow and assumed the role of Shimtar, does that mean that the outlaws just lost her? Artemis tells him not at all. The people can choose their own Shimtar. The time for her being here has passed. Jason asks, what about the bow of Raw? You're not keeping it, are you? And Artemis says, of course she is. Why wouldn't she? Jason tells her, ah, no reason. Suddenly, Olan's voice cuts through the crowd, shouting for someone. Help! It's Bizarro! His heart's not beating! He's dead! Is Bizarro dead? I don't know. Well, I kind of do. I've already read ahead. And oh my god, is that story incredible. You need to go read it yourself, and we'll get to it eventually here at Comic Storian, but it's going to take some time as the storyline is happening right this moment. Now, if you click right over here, you'll find some more Red Hood storylines. And if you click right over here, you'll find something recommended by YouTube. And if you look at my wrist right about here, that's a Red Hood tattoo, just to let you know how much I enjoy the Red Hood. My subscription button is down below. Don't forget to check that out. And I will see you guys next time right here at Comic Storian. Thank you for joining us. Now a moment of silence for Bizarro. Stop clicking, we're having a moment of silence.